Hi everyone! This is our second night of our series all about church. Not the Church of Manchester UMC, but what people like to refer to as Big C Church or the Christian Church Universal. While we attend Manchester, which is part of the United Methodist denomination, we wouldn't exist at all if the religion of Christianity hadn't been formed. As you all hopefully know, Christianity started with Jesus and it started spreading with Paul the Apostle, author of most of the New Testament. And then a couple hundred years in, Christianity was looking pretty different depending on which city and which part of the world you lived in. Different churches had access to different letters and gospels and their beliefs and practices kind of evolved from there. They didn't have the internet or phones to stay easily connected to each other and make sure everyone was on the same page. As a result, some church leaders eventually got together and decided it was important for Christians to have an established canon or a group of religious writings considered authoritative, aka the Bible, and to have a statement of beliefs that defined the core aspects of what they believed. These statements of beliefs are called creeds. So tonight we are talking about creeds. This may sound boring, and it could be if we were to really get into the weeds of what the creeds say, but we're not gonna do that. I really just want you guys to know that these creeds exist and that they held a very important role in the early church and are still the defining authority on what a Christian church is. While we have tons of different denominations, there are some core things that we all have in common. We Christians can disagree on some really big things like the nature of scripture, the afterlife, or how God saves people. We can be so different, it's hard to even see what we have in common. But we do have some things in common because of the creeds. When Christians break off and come up with theology that breaks from the creeds, they are no longer considered Christian. For example, Jehovah's Witnesses and Latter-day Saints believe in Jesus and use the Christian Bible, but they are not inside of the Christian religion because their beliefs depart from those found in the creeds. So I think it's important for all Christians to know what actually defines us as a distinct religion and why that's the case. So the Christian church right now is split into three distinct chunks, Catholic, Protestant, and Eastern Orthodox. These three chunks have established councils and creeds of their own, but before the first big split, the Great Schism in 1054 AD, one, as one universal church, we recognized five creeds. Two of these fives were established at councils, which were large ecumenical councils, which were large gatherings of Christian leaders from all over the world. Remember, travel and communication were ex extremely difficult. So that meant these councils were a really big deal. They had to make the most of their time and hammer out some really difficult but really important theological concepts. Christians from different re regions had different ideas, so trying to pull everyone together to agree on one established doctrine was very difficult, and things could get pretty heated. These councils would last several days, and there was lots of shouting and sometimes even physical violence. But at the end of each council, a creed was either written or an earlier creed was affirmed, um, or it was amended, and Christians across the world adapted. If you or your church disagreed, you weren't considered Christian any longer. Now, I'm going to give you a quick and dirty overview of those five creeds. This will not make you an expert, but if you enjoy history or if you want to take a deeper dive into our doctrine, this would be good enough to launch you into some further research. The first two creeds uh, were not written by councils, so we aren't sure exactly who wrote them or when they were written. The early Roman Creed and the Apostles' Creed were established sometime in the second or third century, and both of these creeds used Trinitarian language. Now remember, Jesus was a Jew, so Christianity evolved from Judaism. The core difference between us and Jews is that Christians believe Jesus is God and they believe that we believe that God is um, in three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So these creeds helped early Christians define that they were indeed distinctly different from their Jewish heritage. The Apostles' Creed is short, straightforward, and easy to memorize, which is why it has had staying power. 
Lots of churches and lots of denominations, including ours, recite it in worship to center us and remind us of our core beliefs and what binds us together as the Big C Christian Church. While we don't recite it every week every, anymore, we will bring it back occasionally depending on the sermon series topic at Manchester. The Nicene Creed was established in the Council of Nicaea in 325. This was the first biggie. It was the result of a, the first big ecumenical council, and it was written with the distinct purpose to define core Christian beliefs. It really, really focused hard on defining what the three persons of the Trinity are, how they are distinctly different from each other, and how they relate to each other. The Chalcedonian Creed is next. It was adopted in 451 at the Council of Chalcedon and established that Christ is of two natures, fully human and fully God. Okay, big stuff. Finally, we have the Athanasian Creed, which is the newest of the creeds, um, at least those that were written before the Great Schism. But this one is interesting because it was not written at an ecumenical council. In fact, don't exactly know when it was written or even who wrote it. We originally assumed it was this guy named Athanasius, hence the name, but now with further research that seems highly unlikely. The best guess we have now is a Gaelic monk named Vincent of Lyrins sometime in the late 5th or early 6th century. This creed is long and it again hashes out but in even more detail than the other two creeds, the three persons of the Trinity and the dual nature of Christ. It also adds in that people who don't believe these specifics are heading to an everlasting fire. So this caused a lot of debate and made a lot of people mad because remember, this was not a collaborative effort among Christian leaders at an ecumenical council. This was one guy's take. So also the original purpose of this creed is very different than the Nicene or the Chalcedonian creed. This creed was meant to be recited in worship. It wasn't created to bring the church together and hash out doctrine. It was created as a liturgical element for a worship service. So it was often put to music or read like a poem, which again is probably why it caught on so quickly despite the controversy. It's much easier to adapt to something if you hear it, say it, or even sing it every week. So that's all I'm going to say about the creeds. Hopefully now you can see why they were so important and the crucial role they played in the formation of the Christian church and the role they still play in the maintenance of the established church today. So as you explore your own faith and you ask yourself questions like, wait, why do I believe that Jesus is God? Was he just like a cool dude? Why does the church claim a Trinitarian God, even though we came from monotheism, the whole one God thing with the Jewish people? How does it work that Jesus was a man who was born, but is also God when God is eternal? These questions are important and they've already been debated and the conclusions were the results of hard fought battles between our Christian ancestors. We can, of course, disagree with the creeds. You certainly wouldn't be the first, but if you do, you can at least now know what you're disagreeing with which will help you as you figure out what you believe instead. So that's all I got. Hope you all have a great discussion in your small groups today. Bye.